name is Scott Carlson, and I'm going to be giving a brief summary of the life cycle of a low mass star. So starting off in the main sequence, such as our sun, the star is converting hydrogen into helium. Once that hydrogen is all used up, a red giant star, star is formed. From there, a helium core fusion star is formed, in which helium is fused into uh, carbon. From there, a double shell fusion red, red giant star is formed where helium fusion begins around the inert carbon core after the core helium is exhausted. From there, a planetary nebula is formed in which the dying star expels its outer layers, leaving behind an exposed inert core. Lastly, a white dwarf is the remaining result, uh, which is primarily compo composed of carbon and oxygen because the core of the low mass star never grows hot enough to produce heavier elements. Hello, my name is Chris Chavez and I will be talking about the life sequence of a high mass star. Starting with the blue main sequence star, four hydrogen nuclei fuse into a single helium nucleus through CNO. After this, a red supergiant begins to form. The core hydrogen exhausts, the core shrinks and heats, hydrogen fusion begins around the inner helium core, causing expansion in the star. After this, a helium core fusion supergiant begins to form. It gets hot enough to fuse all helium into carbon. The core expands and slows the rate of hydrogen fusion, causing the outer layers to shrink. After this, a multiple shell fusion supergiant begins to form. It burns out of helium, shrinks and heats till fusion of heavier metals begin. After this, a supernova. The iron cannot provide fusion energy, so it accumulates in the core till it can no longer be supported, and after this it explodes catastrophically. The core collapses and forms a ball of neutrons, or it can, it can collapse further and create a black hole. Hello, Robert here. As depicted by my teammates, the HR diagram can help scientists and amateur astronomers understand the life cycle of almost any star in the night sky. However, as my teammates pointed out, the HR diagram does not plot the final stage of a high mass star. Addressing this simple limit of the HR diagram could impress the awe of a neutron star or a black hole onto a student. More importantly, we can begin talking about what we could learn and the mysteries waiting to be revealed. <laughs>